AMD has made something truly amazing because inside this device is their new laptop chip that surpasses anything we've seen before in this space. So they've combined a 16 core CPU with a 40 core GPU, but it's an integrated GPU and it performs at like an RTX 4060 to a 4070 level. Like it's like a very performant integrated GPU and it also has shared memory on a very fast 256 bit memory bus. So you get a ton of bandwidth to support that CPU and GPU and it's just, something actually amazing. Now, the first device to launch with this new chip is this thing right here, the Flow Z13 from Asus. And the chip is AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. It's arguably the worst named chip ever, but it's a fantastic chip. So this device is a gaming slash performance enthusiast tablet, and the CPU performance is so good. It's actually one of the best in the laptop space right now. It has wicked fast multi-core CPU performance, and then the GPU, the integrated GPU, is just on a whole nother level. This has the 8060S from AMD. It's the top tier chip in the family, and it has 40 compute units. It's literally the best performing integrated GPU that you can get on any Windows laptop. And it actually does perform like an RTX 4060 or maybe like a lower wattage RTX 4070. It is so weird to be able to play like Cyberpunk at 100 frames per second on integrated graphics. Like, do you realize how crazy that is? That is just, it's just not been a thing. It's never been a thing, not even close when it comes to integrated graphics and this can do it. Also, it is a surprisingly strong performer at lower wattages, even like that silent profile. So running at just 35 watts, you can get very playable frame rates for lights to even moderately demanding titles. Now, one of the more interesting benefits when it comes to a system with shared memory like this is that you can allocate a specific amount of memory just for the video card. So on a system with 32 gigs of RAM, you can be like, hey, I want my GP to have 24 gigs of VRAM. Now on games and stuff, having a little bit of extra VRAM is nice, but the more interesting application of it is the audience, the growing audience today of people who wanna dabble in local AI models. And even on a system like this with just 32 gigs of memory, I'm able to run much larger models than many other systems out there just because you get 24 gigs of VRAM fast VRAM. And also, if you go to the top tier, you get a system with 128 gigs of memory, you can allocate 96 of that to VRAM. And at that point, you're running really large, well, relatively really large uh, AI models. And I think for that industry, this is just, this is unprecedented. Like you normally can't get a consumer level hardware that runs x86 that has this amount of memory for this type of price at that kind of memory speed. The fan noise on the system is okay. It is a very audible system when it's on load. Uh, so if you look on the back here, the fans are like the intake is on the back, but then it exhausts out the top. And because of just how we use a device like this, you're just, you can hear the fans going. It's not a super loud system, but I've just been exposed to so many really ultra quiet systems as of late. So this stands out as being more audible. It does keep the system well cooled though. The battery life is good. It's running a larger battery this year. So it's 70 watt hours. And considering how good the performance is at the top end, this actually lands better than I thought it would. I'm most impressed by the power efficiency in that like low power or idle state, because that's where a lot of the high performance machines struggle. And this one handles it pretty well. Now, one thing to note this, tablet or this system is actually a little bit thicker than you might expect. So this is this year's model and this over here, <laughs> you didn't hear nothing. Uh, this is the previous year's model. Actually, no, this is like a couple years old, but the new one is thicker. And in the world of tablets and technology, a bigger, thicker device and heavier device is usually not the trend you wanna go and it's like the new model, right? But the reason for it is because this chip, this big ass chip, showcases its performance best at that 75 to 80 watt power profile. And you have to cool it properly. So it's just got a more robust thermal system that is a little bit heavier and bigger. And in addition to cooling it with a bigger system, you actually have to feed it a little bit more power. So this is now included in the box. It's a 200 watt AC adapter. And this does not use USB-C to plug in. This uses uh, the proprietary Asus plug that we've seen on a bunch of their more recent laptops, uh, and it plugs in like that. Now, this system, as much as I like it, obviously has a flaw, because they always do. There's always a thing, and with this one, it's the price. So this system starts at $2,200, and that's the base, that's the base model without the top-end GPU, and 
I mean, the, the value proposition at that price point, look, look, if you're just buying this to play games and you just want like a high performance machine that has good GPU and you don't really care about the VRAM, I wouldn't do it. There's so many other better systems, even from Asus, that fit that ticket way better, unless you really need the tablet. But for the people that really want the shareable, like the adjustable memory and just to be, the ability to have massive amounts of VRAM, there's truly nothing else on the market that's quite like this. I mean, there will be in the future, but right now this is the first and this is the only. Um, so my take on it is that if this is something that you've been looking for, if you work in like, the machine learning space, or if you do stuff uh, that just takes advantage of huge amounts of VRAM, this is really cool. But the bigger takeaway is just like this, this is, this is innovation. This is actually architectural chip innovation. This is like, it's just so cool and it provides so many benefits. It's unfortunate that the pricing is where it is. Now, if I had to guess, I don't think this is where Asus or AMD wanted to be. I don't think they wanted their chip to be super expensive, that only a handful of like really niche customers could afford it. No, they, I don't think they wanted to be there, but I think the yields on the production were not great. And this is where they are for this first generation. But I, I really think that the future iterations of this product will be absolutely awesome. Okay, there you have it. The new chip from AMD in this new device from Asus.